I'm sorry I would have made this video sooner, but I got slugged too. Hi guys, Brain here and welcome to another commentary video. Today we're talking about the slugging versus hooking debate, which is something I'm pretty sure you've been wondering how I feel about, especially since I took part in Carnivorous's little uh, challenge where we got to see which character gets the best slugging versus hooking results on Xenomorph, which was the one I was slated to do. Um, and did end up doing. <laughs> um, I actually got better hooking results than slugging results, but a majority of players got better slugging results than they did hooking results. And in general, for about the past month or so, the DVD community has been kind of in an uproar about this whole slugging versus hooking debate. And it's been something that's really upset both sides in one way or the other. And I just kind of want to talk about it. So yeah, let's go ahead and talk about it. So the TLDR of the problem here is that essentially killer players have realized very intelligently so that they can just kind of circumvent anti-tunnel perks if they wish to by just not hooking at all. Decipher strike? Nope. Off the record? Nope. Dead hard? Nope. Anti-tunnel perks by nature are designed to only activate after hook because that's when you get tunneled is after you get hooked. So behavior has chosen, unfortunately so, to address tunneling not as a mechanic in the game, but with perks. And as a result, people have found a way around these perks. So these perks are no longer going to affect, resulting in people being on the floor for four straight minutes. Now there's an elephant in the room that it comes to uh, addressing both uh, sides of this equation, so let's go ahead and break that down. On the killer end of things, killers have been frustrated for a while because survivors have found out that they can use their anti-tunnel perks not for tunneling at all, but just kind of offensively instead of defensively. Even the base kit survivor endurance that you get straight off hook, people are using to body block for the unhooker, which is not its intended use, but people are using it that way to play aggressively. Whether they be that or the anti-tunnel perks themselves, these tools that are meant to defend the survivor are instead being used maliciously to punish the killer for for engaging in healthy gameplay that would suit the game's long-term health better. What shows the problem with choosing perks to fix your problem instead of mechanics? Because if we've learned anything about DB players throughout the years is that they can abuse a perk, they absolutely will. So the obvious way around this is to just not hook at all. If stuff like off the record, decisive strike, dead heart, etc., only activate if you hook. If you just don't hook, they just don't go off. So you don't get to be, you know, the receiving end of a malicious use of these perks. But that leads to the other elephant in the room here. On the survivor side, besides perks, there's really no defense to being slugged on the floor for four straight minutes. Behavior kind of expects you to run unbreakable, to run boon exponential, to be able to pick yourself back up. Slugging as a mechanic, I feel it realistically it is not frowned upon and shouldn't be frowned upon. It is frowned upon by people who take this game way too seriously and are babies and entitled about everything. But to the, you know, the normal average player base, a killer slugging every once in a while is not a big deal. It's the I'm going to be on the ground for four straight minutes that is the the pain point because all of your hook states are 70 seconds now each hook state got updated to 70 seconds so that's just above two minutes of time that you will spend on hook not including the part where the entity sacrifices you and you fly up into the sky uh, but you're spending roughly two minutes uh, doing nothing in that scenario whereas uh, while you're on the ground that's a full four minutes so that's roughly double the time you spend on hook so you're quite literally spending more time in the game but also more time doing nothing which is the real boring and sucky part there's no in-game mechanic right now to bleed out faster. There's no in-game mechanic right now to crawl faster when you're on the ground. You have to bring perks to be able to do certain things. So simply, if you didn't plan to be slugged, you just have to endure four full minutes uh, of just complete absence <laughs> of gameplay. And it's not hard to see how that's a boring time. If you haven't caught on by now, this is a debate that we are having amongst ourselves as players. But realistically, these are not things we should be discussing between ourselves, but rather focusing on behavior to address these issues because behavior is the one that chose to address in-game health problems with perks and not solutions. You should always be expected to use a certain playstyle or bring certain perks over there being actual built-in fail saves to prevent these unhealthy situations from happening. This brings me back to the old adage of like a snake oil salesman. If you don't know what that is, a snake oil salesman is essentially somebody who either heavily exaggerates or straight up fabricates a, a problem or an illness, and then they in turn sell you the solution to whatever big thing that they have made up or exaggerated, and then profit off of your fear and misery without actually really rectifying the issue at all. Tunneling is an unhealthy thing in the game that a lot of people don't like. So instead of addressing it, we're going to give you a bunch of perks to address that. So we're selling you the oil to fix this, the problem. And now 
because the oil <laughs> doesn't actually fix the solution and creates more problems than it helps, now killers are trying to find a way around that by using a playstyle in the game that is unhealthy to avoid the unhealthy thing that they sold them. So now survivors are being sold perks to solve the solution of being left on the ground. And it's just, it's just a big cycle that just does not end well for anybody. <laughs> And from a purely cynical standpoint, behavior is a business, so they need to make money. So realistically, it, making a mechanic to mitigate these issues is a lot of time and effort that does not give them any short-term profit. It would give them long-term profit because players would stay with the game longer, but as we have found out, if you pay attention to economics at all, a lot of like the past 10 plus years of <laughs> company uh, motivation has been short-term profit, not long-term sustainability, but I will not get into an economics lesson here. <laughs> so it's actually in, you know, at least in the short term best interest to just sell you the solution to the problem instead of actually fixing it themselves. So that's kind of the situation that we are in. But I think it's 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 unfortunate because right now a lot of killers are mad at survivors, a lot of survivors are mad at killers, and content creators are at each other's throats about their takes about this. But real, real, realistically, it's it's behavior that failed to give a solution to this issue. And it's highlighted how they just think that perks and playstyles can just smooth over their lack of uh, addressing these issues inside the game. So realistically, we should look at their side of things, look at the behavior side of things, instead of looking at what can killer players do better, what can survivor players do better. Um, I always say this in so many different videos, but for some reason we are still not there yet. Uh, DBD is not one big town hall. We can't gather anybody, everybody together in one small area and tell everybody how to play the game and how to behave. That is not going to be possible. So we have to guardrail that ourselves. We have to guide them to do the, the things that are best for the long-term health of the game, because you can't get everybody together and kind of just scold them into doing what, what is best, right? Right. So the only people that can realistically corral the player base into doing a thing or another is not nobody out here. None of the killer mains, none of the survivor mains, none of the content creators. It's behavior interactive themselves. And that is on them. And it's the solution is not in person play styles. That does not solve the situation. So, yeah. That's essentially a, a very short TLDR of every, what everybody's been arguing about and the things that I feel about it. So, yeah you come here for my commentary videos so if you like to see more of those make sure you like and subscribe because otherwise you're not going to see them i know a lot of you watch my videos and you're not sub which means that that that, that makes me sad you want to make me sad don't answer that don't answer that this is the dbd community some people might want to see me sad anyways my point being i upload more videos so i'll see you in the next one but if i do not i will see you when i see you goodbye so